Do you want to be saved and go to heaven? There is an old Latin saying that goes like this, verba docent exempla trahent, meaning words instruct but examples lead. Our Lord Jesus Christ, a perfect teacher, used this divine method of education, using examples, to attract those who heard him to also follow him. That's why he always taught using parables and examples. But there was a much more profound reason why he used this method when preaching. So let's be attentive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Salve Maria. Today's Gospel is presented to us by St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 23. And here we find our Lord speaking to the crowds down by the sea and telling them the beautiful story of the parable of the sower. Now, this parable of the sower is very, very well known. But let us always remember that the Word of God is eternal and always presents us with, with new thoughts and new perspectives. This parable speaks to us about a sower, a sower that goes out to sow his seeds. Some of them fall on the path and they are eaten by birds. Other seeds fall on rocky ground with little soil and therefore don't lay any roots. Still others fall amongst some thorns and were strangled and killed before being able to develop into plants. Finally and finally, there are some seeds that fall on good soil and produce a lot of good fruit. And then our Lord himself starts to explain this parable. But, and be careful, did you notice that I said that our Lord starts to explain the parable? Yes, but also notice that our Lord explains it only to the apostles and not to the crowds to whom he preached the parable. Now, isn't this strange? He explains the parable to the apostles but not to the crowds? Why is this? We would think that he would have normally maybe done the contrary. He would have explained the parable to the crowds, not having to explain it really to his apostles. After all, after all, the, the apostles were, were always with him and, and they knew his methods, um, they knew his style, um, and they, they accompanied and they knew his doctrine very, very well. They would have been able to follow and to understand their master much better than the crowds who were, who were just beginners at listening to our Lord. Well, I'll give you the answer to this question a little bit later on during this commentary of the Gospel. For now, let's take a quick look at the parable itself. This parable is a true vade mecum. Vade mecum, which means a manual, a complete manual for our examination of conscience and a beautiful way for us to prepare ourselves to obtain salvation. Because that is what this parable is all about. Do you want to be saved and go to heaven? Or do you choose the world and all its lies and vanities only to eventually, eventually, and unfortunately, maybe fall into the eternal fires of hell? Well, the choice is yours, and no one else can make that choice for you. So, today's parable is our guide to help us make the right decision. According to this parable, there are three ways to lose your soul, but only one way to, sa to save it. So, the first the first way to lose your soul, the seeds that fall on the path and are eaten up by the birds. Our Lord explains that these seeds are those people, those people who hear the word of the kingdom without understanding it. Because those people don't understand the word, then 
the devils are able to lead them by the nose straight into hell. But, wait a minute, Father, someone may say, well, Father, um, didn't our Lord say those who do not understand the word of God, um, they will be led to hell? Isn't, isn't this strange? How can it be someone's fault if they don't understand the word of God? Not everyone, Father Bande, is equally, is equally intelligent. How can our Lord condemn anyone for not understanding his word? Isn't that somewhat unfair? Okay, so very well. So let's take a better look at what our Lord is saying here and therefore respond to this, to this accusation that, that is sometimes made against our Lord. Remember, brothers and sisters, that our Lord, He is perfect. He is perfectly just, and His words are words of truth. So, what does He mean here? It is obvious that our Lord here is not talking about human intelligence. There are many, many, many saints out there who are not very learned and not very humanly intelligent. What they they became saints, and they are today in heaven. And there are also many great intellects who are probably today deep in hell, Lucifer being the first one. The lack of understanding our Lord is talking about here is the lack of faith, culpable lack of faith. Let me give you, let me give you an example. Um, to be born into another religion and not to have discovered and received the true faith is no one's fault. But to have been born in the Catholic Church and to have received the true faith at baptism and then, and then lose it is always a grave sin. This happens because the person doesn't practice and doesn't nourish his or her faith and ends up losing love and confidence in God. For example, if, if a husband truly and really loves and trusts his wife and hears a terrible calumny against her, he'll brush this calumny right off because it would be impossible for him to distrust the one he loves and trusts so very much. We humans can, can and, and we do make mistakes. Not so, our God, not so our Lord. God does not make any mistakes. So, if we truly love God, we can never lose our faith in Him. But remember, faith is capable of growing and diminishing. That's why we should practice our faith constantly. How? Well, let me give you two practical tips on how to grow in your faith. The first tip, by making frequent acts of faith and frequent acts of, of love of God. Very simple. By, by maybe visiting the Blessed Sacrament, by making a quick act of faith in the real presence, the real Eucharistic presence in the Eucharist. When we see um, something good or bad that is happening around us, we should make a quick act of faith that this is happening because, because God is allowing it to happen and will take some good out of it. Another example, um, to judge everything around you from the perspective of your faith. Why is this happening, for example? Why does God have, um, why is God allowing such a thing to, to happen? Uh, or when we see something evil, or, or when we see a sin being committed, we should make an interior act of rejection and an interior act of reparation to God for the offense against him that is being committed. We cannot be indifferent to anything that has to do with our faith. For instance, if we are watching a television or, or a video program that unfortunately exposes a certain terrible sin as being something normal because, because it's modern, then I have to learn to reject it. Why? Because I have faith in God. But 
Let's go back to the parable, to today's um, gospel reading. So, the next seed our Lord talks about here is the seed that falls on rocky ground. Our Lord explains that these seeds are, are all those people who receive the word of God with joy, but they don't grow deep roots in their faith. When trials and sufferings come, um, well, out goes the faith. They lose their faith. Now, I might surprise you in saying this, but, but these um, types of people are often looked upon as, as good Catholics. Yes, they often seem very fervent in prayer. They're, they're many times at Mass during the week. They talk a lot about how much they, they love Jesus and, and how they have great faith in Him, but they have faith because Jesus always gives them everything they pray for. Well, I'm sure you all know people like these. They have faith, yes, they do have faith, but is this kind of faith enough? No, their faith is skin deep. Why do I say this? Because when trials arrive, sufferings, setbacks, the faith goes out the window. Allow me to go back to that example I gave earlier of a man and, a wife, and, and his wife. So imagine, imagine a man who, who keeps saying to everybody that he loves his wife so dearly and that all is well in his marriage. But when the going between the husband and the wife starts to get tough, then out goes the wife. The husband abandons her. Can this be called true love? Obviously not. We prove our love by sacrificing ourselves for God and for our neighbor. Such people who keep boasting about their love for God and their faith in God, but when the going gets tough, starts to flee from the sacrifices God sends them, well, is it really God they love? Or, or is it what they can benefit from God that they love? How many times have I heard people say, I have great faith because God always hears my prayers. Well, and if God didn't hear your prayers, my son, would you still have faith? Is God no longer God if he doesn't hear your prayers? Do you love God or do you love the benefits you receive from God? This is a question we have to ask ourselves. If we are unable to thank God and love Him all the more when, when He sends us trials and sufferings, then we don't really love Him. Now, let's talk about the seeds that fall amongst the thorns. Oh, the number of such Catholics is probably the greatest, brothers and sisters. These people love the world more than God. They like to say that, that God, God is okay, just as long as, as He doesn't meddle with my social and my private life. But, brothers and sisters, the love of God and the love of the world are not compatible. No one can serve two masters, says Jesus. What's more, a constant pursuit of pleasure does not bring lasting happiness. Our hearts are made for God. Only true love for God and for the cross of Christ can bring us lasting joy. And finally, and finally now, um, let's talk about the good seed. Um, the good seed, uh, which is the way to salvation. In today's parable of the sower, our Lord gives the last but most important example of all those good people who hear the word of God and put it into practice. And these are those who will be saved. This is the secret to salvation. Putting your love into action, into practice. Now, going back to our question, the apostles received an explanation of this parable while the crowds did not. Why is this? It's because our Lord knew very well that if he spoke clearly and not through parables to the crowds, they would not be able to take his teachings. They would understand what he meant, but they would not have the strength to accept it 
to put it into practice. And if out of revolt, they chose one of the three wrong paths, their responsibility would be greater. And so would their punishment here on earth and in hell. So our Lord in his mercy gave them a parable so that they could figure it out in their own time, at their, at their own pace, so they can eventually have the strength to accept his teachings. So what about us? We obviously have a much greater responsibility to practice virtue and to follow God's will than all those who do not know Christ or do not know the Catholic Church. We, as Catholics, have Holy Scripture. We have the teachings of the Church, of the Fathers of the Church, the Catechism. We have the sacraments. We have every spiritual means to save our souls. So, our responsibility, brothers and sisters, is much greater, and so will our chastisement be much greater if we don't correspond all we have received. Today's Gospel calls us to reflect on all of these things. Let's seriously take a look at the four different paths before us and ask ourselves which one we've chosen for ourselves and ask Our Lady to help us to find and to stay on the right path until the end of our lives. Because as a good mother, she was, she was always there. She's always there stretching out her hand towards us, always ready to save us at all times. And may Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Salve Maria.